welcome to In The Workshop. This is a Stuart 504 boiler, part 6, completing the 3-tap turret and fitting a hand pump. I need to make a suitable base to support this 3-tap turret. The first thing to do is to measure the height from the bench, and it's 2 inches. It could have been anything, I just bent the pipe by hand, but it worked out at 2 inches off the bench, which is about right. Time to fed it through my box of non ferrous metals, and I found this. And as I was trying to part it off to shorten it, I found out that it was, after all, alum bronze and not brass. So this went back into my non ferrous box. Very quickly, I exchanged it for this. Alum bronze is not very good stuff to machine, especially using a small lathe in a home workshop. This is much better. It's a regular piece of brass. The first thing to do is nearly part it off because it was quite long and then snap it off so it didn't fly all over the bed of the lathe. And in this part of the clip, I'm taking a rough cut across the front, a simple facing cut, and then I follow it with a slower facing cut to get it nice and flat. As I look back at these sequences during the editing process, I realise I could have fabricated this and it would have taken a lot less time and turned a lot less of the metal to swarf. But it's more fun this way. I find plain turning quite therapeutic, but then again I am a bit strange. And it's a good thing to do in these very strange times. I'm using a round nose tool for most of the turning, because I do want some curvy bits in it. To speed up the job, I did keep dragging the tool back to the beginning. That's why it's making a funny noise. But when I went the other way, I used the auto traverse. So the speed was far better, going from right to left than it was from left to right. Really, I don't know why I didn't just rough it all the way, but no, I thought for the video, I'll do it nicely one way and show you what a good finish you can get, and then do it like a hooligan in the opposite direction and show you what a poor finish you will get. This did waste quite a lot of metal, I do admit it, but I really didn't fancy a fabrication. After a while, it started to look like this, and I changed the round nose lathe tool for the parting tool. You can use parting tools for quite a good variety of different jobs, Turning like this is one of them, but don't do this if you've got a carbide tip parting tool because the tip will probably fall out. Carbide tip parting tools are better off left to do what they're supposed to be doing, parting off or grooving. I did this job a little bit on the wrong side if I'm honest, I'm just having a bit of a play. At this stage the measurement wasn't quite two inches from the bottom of the base to the top of the column. And really I should have done this part of the job a lot earlier. I need to reduce the diameter of the base so that it fits inside the chuck. This I've just done, but before I remove the part, I'm going to drill the hole in the bottom and thread it 2BA. And yes, I did use a centre drill first, I just left it out of the sequence. After threading the hole in the base, it was time to take a few facing cuts just to reduce the thickness of the base. I think this looks better. This part is critical. It has to be just under half an inch in diameter. You'll see why when I put it all together. But I will give you a clue. The square part that the taps screw into is half an inch square. That's about it. Before removing the part from the chuck though, I'm going to polish it up with some wet or dry sandpaper. A bit of health and safety. When you use this stuff, always pull it upwards. Then if it tears, your hands go up in the air, not down into where the lathe is spinning. In this clip, as you can see, I've turned the part round in the chuck and it's a bit too thick is this bit, so I'm reducing it by parting it off. I need to reduce the part past the 2 inches measurement, then turn it down to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and thread it 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. I don't want it to be undersized, it's got to be just right, so I'm checking it frequently with the micrometer. Eventually, it is reduced to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and in this clip, I'm threading the end 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch using my tailstock die holder. Now I need to shorten this part because it's going to go into the block and if it's too long, it will block up the steamway between the holes in the block. At this stage, the tool is getting quite blunt. It's done quite a lot of work. So I nibbled away some of the thickness before taking a facing cut. Here you can see I've drilled all the way through the middle of the brass block. I'll be removing the burr very shortly, but before that I'm going to thread it 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. There wasn't much to thread really because the main thread is nearly all the way through. Now it's time for the trusty Loctite 542 hydraulic seal. I put the part back in the chuck to hold it and use the spanner to tighten up the assembly. And this is more or less what it's going to look like. 
I received a comment from a viewer saying I shouldn't have made the taps equidistant, but I like it that way. The important thing was that the 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap is in the centre, otherwise the base column would have been too thick. That's a three tap turret complete, and I'm going to find it a very useful accessory. What I'm doing at the moment is making an adapter to fit a piece of 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter copper pipe between the hand pump and the check valve on the boiler. The hand pump is designed to use quarter inch pipe, that's why it has a 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch union nut which in turn takes a cone union for a quarter inch pipe. But thankfully my friend Chris English at CME Engineering makes me an odd batch of pipe union adapter cones from time to time, and they're very useful. Time to test the pump and see if it all works. I've connected a piece of silicone rubber tubing to the pump's water inlet and put the other end of the tube in some water. And by moving the lever back and forth vigorously in no time at all, water has been pumped into the boiler. The thing about this pump is it's got quite a large ram. And that's good because it fills the boiler with water very quickly. But the thing that's not so good is, against pressure, the handle doesn't move quite so easily. So we'll have to make a handle extension. But this is nothing for my delicate piano playing fingers and vice-like grip. I haven't made a base for this boiler yet, and before I do that I'm going to give it a test run. I'm going to use the 504 boiler to steam my superbly built Stuart Models triple expansion engine. Built in Scotland by a very talented engineer called Mr Ronnie Mall. But that's not in this video, that's going to be in another video. So that's it for this one. Make sure you stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.